What's up guys, Grizzle Wizard here, welcome back to the channel. I'm coming back for another first time horror movie reaction, and today we have one of the greats. I'm talking about John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978. Um, this is kind of the film that started it all, um, I say, having never seen it before. <laughs> it's um, another one of those films that like I've known about my entire life, but kind of avoided. But at this point in the marathon, I've seen quite a few horror movies and I'm feeling particularly brave today. So, we're going to watch Halloween. Because this is such an iconic movie, there are definitely things about it that I already know. For example, um, it's a slasher. Uh, the main character is Mike Myers, and he's like a crazy guy with a knife. And he's huge, and he wears a mask. I guess that's where the knowledge stops, actually, so <laughs> I'm pretty fresh. I also know this one has that absolute banger of a theme song. It's like, this is Halloween, this is Halloween, Michael Myers gonna stab you with a knife, or something like that. But other than that, I just know that I'm about to get scared by a movie that's older than I am. Fun fact, I'm sitting down to watch this on October 25th, 2023, 45 years to the day that this movie came out. That's right, this movie is 45 years old today. So happy birthday, Michael Myers. Uh, without further ado, let's take a look at Halloween, 1978. Wow, that is a really bright Lionsgate logo. <laughs> I see you. Oh, that's right, this is the theme song. What the fuck was I thinking of? Nice. Starting off nice and spooky. I really, really love how minimalistic all these intros have been for like the 1970s era horror films. They really unfold slowly. Give you a chance to really like, mentally actuate for the experience you're about to go through. It's kind of making me anxious, but it's mostly making me want to carve a pumpkin. I haven't carved a good, like, traditional style pumpkin in a long time. Back in the day, um, jack-o'-lanterns were made out of turnips. And if you've ever seen pictures of the, those old-school style jack-o'-lanterns, they're so much scarier. <laughs> Haddonfield, Illinois. Halloween night, 1963. It's Halloween night, they've only got a single pumpkin out. That's kind of underselling it, but... It's back in the 60s. Oh, this is creepy. We're doing a subjective camera angle. It really makes you feel like you're being spied on. Okay. Oh, we're making out and then we're going upstairs. You guys are about to break the first rule of uh, horror movies, aren't you? Good for them. <laughs> so it's someone in a costume. He just waltzed right into the house, too. I mean, like, Haddonfield, Illinois must be a small town, don't lock the doors kind of thing. Oh, it's the same clown mask he was wearing. Oh my god, girl, where's your situational awareness? There's someone in your room. Oh, shit! Michael, so it's the brother. It's her own brother. I like that. That was cool. I like the way you never actually saw the blade going in. It kept panning away. But it's still just as, like, upsetting and shocking. They always get you with what you don't see, you know? Your imagination fills in those blanks. Is that someone pulling up to the house? Michael? Oh, damn. Oh, happy Halloween, guys. Jesus, their lives are never going to be the same. Is it like a psychosexual thing? Did he like, is he obsessed with his sister, didn't want someone else to be with her, so he killed her? Or is he just a run-of-the-mill, like, am I thinking about it too much? He's just a crazy guy. Psychiatric facility. Don't underestimate it. Don't you think we could refer to it as him? I was gonna say that's a pretty cold disposition, even if you are like a clinical kind of guy. He read the case file though. What do I give him when we take him in front of the judge? Sarazine. He'll barely be able to sit up. That's the idea. Got it. So he's got some sort of parole thing coming up, and so they're trying to pump him full of full of enough drugs to not be a threat in the courtroom. 
Whoa. That don't seem normal. Yeah, that's pretty upsetting. I mean, just at Illinois State Hospital, are they all criminally insane? Has there already been, like, a major... Oh, fuck! There's already been a big escape. Why would you roll the window down? Why would you... What? <laughs> Someone climbs on top of the car, you don't give him an opening. All right, and in this chaos... Michael Myers is gonna show up somewhere. This, this could even be him right here on, on top of the car. No, that guy's a little scrawny. Isn't he supposed to be huge? Fuck, and now they're just like outside with them all. So much for you don't have anything to worry about. Back where it all started. It's a very mundane looking house. It's in the middle of suburbia. I said it in the Exorcist reaction, too. I think it's always way better when they choose a house that doesn't just look creepy and haunted or anything like that. It's very relatable, somewhere that you might live. Don't forget to drop the key off at the Myers place. I won't! Oh, I see. That's just her house. The Myers place. We haven't seen it yet. Why do they have the key to the Myers place? Is he, like, a, a realtor? Jesus. Jamie Lee Curtis is so young. Babysitter. Okay, cool. So he is, yeah. See, that's a little more on the creepy side right there. Just watch. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Come on. I wish I had you all alone. Just How the fuck did he get outside so fast? God, he's just just standing there menacingly. Sam Haddonfield is 150 miles away from here now. Now, for God's sake, he can't drive a car. He was doing very well last night. So that was him. Stole the car. I mean, if, I figured that out by now, but confirmed. I mean, it is a very safe bet that he's returning to his childhood home because it's literally the only place he knows. Oh God, what? Well, at least now she's seen him because he's been watching her unseen up until now. Samuel's definitely personified fate. In Samuel's writing, fate is immovable like a mountain. Old cars are pretty loud. I feel like she would have heard him drive away. Makes it even creepier. Oh my god, that is a massive pumpkin. <laughs> oh no, bullies. <laughs> yeah, you tell him, kid. No! Oh, I knew it was gonna happen. You little shits owe him a pumpkin. Is he targeting the boy? Or is there... Is there empathy for the boy here? Because he totally just gave his bully a fright, and he presumably watched that all go down, too. He started stalking Lori already, and it could be because she resembles his sister so much, but like, this kid could resemble young him, you know? Man, this is just a masterpiece of subjective perspectives though, like the camera work is so... Like, it put, keeps you on edge the whole time. This is so not okay. <laughs> just drive away, dude! Alright, he's what, like halfway to Haddonfield, basically? He's on his way. It's gotta be super frustrating to be this doctor. He's been warning the officials that, like, you know, the safeguards weren't strong enough, and no one's been listening to him, and now he's being proven right in the worst possible way. This is Asylum Clothes. Oh, it's gonna be the driver of the truck. Yup. Why didn't you wait for me? We did. Fifteen minutes. You totally never showed. That's not true. No, that's fair. If my friend is later than fifteen minutes, I'm walking home. I got shit to do. Paul dragged me into the boys' locker room. Exploring uncharted territory. <laughs> the only reason she babysits is to have a oh, place. Shit. To... I have a place for that. <laughs> I forgot my chemistry book. Hey, isn't that Devon Graham? I don't think so. Oh, Jesus. Speed kills. He was going like 30. 
Also, don't do that. Don't ever confront random strangers because you don't know who you're talking to. There's some real psychos living among us. You know, Annie, someday you're gonna get us all into deep trouble. I can already tell. This whole movie is gonna be like building on on the concept of like we the audience know exactly what's happening, and these poor characters have no idea, and we have to watch them just wander into danger. And there's no way to warn them. Ugh. Come on. Look. Look where? That's the second time she's seen him, but I feel like she's not convinced that she's see like she thinks she's seeing things probably still. Hey, creep. <laughs> it's tragic. Never... God, her friend is so mean. <laughs> see you later. I mean, when you see something like that, it's much easier and much more comforting to yourself to just say, oh, I'm seeing things, you know? But it's also very dangerous. Yeah, no, she's totally on. Oh, fuck. Excuse me, Lori. Oh, Mr. Brackett, I'm sorry, Mr. Brackett. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you. So she knows the local cop. Is that just like community oriented policing or is he, like, he a neighbor or something? Oh, come on. How many times are they going to do this? <sighs> and he moves so fast. He's so huge, but he's able to, like, be gone in a second. That's what's really terrifying. That Raggedy Ann doll is also terrifying. Whoa. I really like how much focus there's been on the time of year. Like, obviously Halloween, yeah, but it's almost like... Like, the season is its own character in this, you know? The leaves, the wind, the colors. Is she bringing that pumpkin to carve with the kid? Because his got smashed. So maybe she can just give that one to him. Make him feel better. Chloe, lost? Why do they do it? Goddamn kids. Whoa. 18, 19. It's Judith's. Judith Myers. Damn. He came home. So this Charlie Bowles kid went crazy 15 years ago also? Is it a coincidence? <laughs> My dad! Get rid of this! Oh, shit! Is he a cop? He's the cop she bumped into, huh? Ah, oh, he's still following them. Yeah, it's totally him. Hi, Annie. Well, why didn't you drive on by? Why'd you have to pull up and interact with him? What happened? The whole car's gonna what smell happened? like weed right now. Oh, that wasn't kids. Bye, girls. There's no way he didn't smell that. Like, he's just giving them a break right now. Give him hell for it later. Pardon me, I'm uh, Loomis. Dr. Sam Loomis. I I'd like to have a word with you if I could. Ten minutes. Yeah, you'll want to hear him out. Yeah, he feels so unsafe being here in this town, knowing that Michael is somewhere in here. God, he's just tailing her all over town. At what point are they going to start recognizing the car? Must have been a pretty long drive. It's like fully nighttime now. Oh man, and he totally blends in because he's wearing a mask. Alright, the Myers house. And they're going to search, but of course they're not going to find anything because he's not here right now. Can a skunk kill a dog? He could have seen inside. Oh, Jesus Christ. The hell was that? Yeah, he's not he's not messing around. He knows exactly what he's dealing with, so he's got protection. So just tell your men to keep their mouths shut and their eyes open. So you're gonna wait for him to come back to the house and then do what? You think you can take him? Like I understand the doctor's logic. I'm not sure I understand the doctor's plan though. What happens once you're face to face with this guy again, you know? I just talked with Ben Tramer and he got real excited when I told him how attractive you were to him. What? Oh, Annie. Why would you do that? <laughs> Come on. Come on, Annie. I can't believe it. I can't tell you anything. Oh, Jesus. And the kid has no idea that the babysitters are communicating in that same very house. Look. 
Ah, uh, that's even worse. Because now he could be anywhere. God, it's so, it's just so anxiety inducing seeing someone who doesn't realize they're in danger, you know? Really? Just in the kitchen? Come on. <laughs> that was so deliberate, making that noise. Like, he fully wants them to be as, as scared as possible. He's getting something out of that as well. The Thing? Nice, another John Carpenter film. Of course. The Boogeyman can only come out on Halloween night, right? Right. While I'm here tonight, I'm not about to let anything happen to you. I feel like that's going to become really important later. Like, she's made a promise to protect him, and she's going to end up doing some wild stuff to try and keep him safe. How did he pull that off, though? You would have seen him through the window. Oh, God! I saw his face. Should I climb out the window? Oh, my God. Man, I hope nothing happens to this kid. <laughs> Not the greatest problem solver, that Annie. <laughs> now, promise me you won't tell anybody about this. <laughs> it is pretty embarrassing. She got stuck in the window. She'll be right here. <laughs> I love it. She immediately tells on her. <laughs> you can always count on little kids to throw you right under the bus. Oh, that's fabulous. When did they leave? About a half hour ago. Oh, utterly fantastic. And he's gone. Yep. Oh, we, you, you saw him moving off. You could see his shoulder that time. Wait a minute. If you watch her, I'll consider talking to Ben Tramer in the morning. Deal. <laughs> I Paul was grounded. He was. Old Jerko found a way to sneak out. Yeah, because he was, like, soaping windows or whatever. Egging, egging cars. I love how many wide shots there are in this movie where someone takes their time walking all the way across the screen. In, in other films, they would have cut that by now because the shots take so long, but they really sit with them in this movie. Uh, that was locked a minute ago. Ah! Fuck! God, he's just choking her with one hand. Oh, there it is. That was cool. They fully did it again, where they left it so, like semi-obscured and a little bit subjective, where like the windshield was frosted up so you couldn't quite see what happened. No, that was really well done. Oh. Because of what Lori told him. This is a night for playing tricks on others. He's trying to get into the spirit of it. But he's gonna see him. God. What a, like, terrifying thing to see. <laughs> they scared each other, I love it. Is this man seriously planning to stand in the bushes all night? He's like thinking like Michael Myers. Oh, these three are the bully kids. Hey. Hey, Lonnie. Get your ass away from there. <laughs> Good job, Doc. Nice. This is the first time he smiled in the whole movie. He genuinely enjoyed that. <laughs> well, it's going to take more than fancy talk to keep me up all night crawling around these bushes. Damn, and he doesn't realize his own daughter's been murdered already. All right, I'll stay with you tonight. Just in the chance that you're right. And if you are right, damn you for letting him go. Yeah, I feel bad for the cop. He has no idea. Honestly, it's for the best that he doesn't know right now, because it allows him to stay focused and do his job. Ah, <laughs> uh, the 70s. You can just leave your fucking car door open and walk away. <laughs> oh god, they're gonna find her body. Because he carried her in here. They're probably making out like five feet from a dead body and just don't know it. Also, he is still in the house, as far as I know. 
Yep, there he is. Have a good time. We definitely will. Oh, geez, they're like, well, we're off the hook. Yep, they're definitely the next ones to go. Oh, and I can't keep you interested, Just answer huh? the damn phone. <laughs> well, I can't. What if it's the Wallaces? Get Annie in trouble, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's true. That's true. She's thinking ahead. Just take it off the hook. <laughs> I hope the call had finished before you did that, or else someone's just going to listen to you guys do it. <laughs> yeah, they're... Oh, go oh, fuck, there's... Mm. Jesus, that's all you got? That was like 30 seconds. <laughs> Quality over quantity, I I guess. Want a beer? Yeah. So they did it in some in like someone else's house, in their bed, and now they're smoking cigarettes in their bedroom? The disrespect. Are those old filtered lucky strikes? You can't even get those anymore. Just drinking their beers. Yeah, teenagers. <laughs> Annie? Oh? Come on out. Oh! God, that got me. You know, I really thought he was just going to come out, blades out, just stabbing people, but he really seems to be a strangle kind of guy. He loves to do the choke, and then he just finishes it with the knife. Oh my god, he skewered him to the wall. Jeez, look at that. Studying his work. Oh my god. <laughs> you fucking clown. At least this at least this psycho killer has a sense of humor. Oh my god, he's wearing his glasses and everything. Cute, Bob, real cute. See anything you like? He's like, no, I have something else in mind. Well, can't you answer me? Is she going to figure it out? But that's not Bob. Well, I'm going to call Lori. I want to know where Paul and Annie are. This is going nowhere. <gasps> uh, oh, oh, with the phone cord! Hello? Now I get your famous squealing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I really had his M.O. wrong. I ass I thought that he was a knife guy all the way, but he's a strangler. He's a strangler, and then he, like, a single thrust to finish it. Like, he didn't use a knife at all in that kill. Like, I think it's understandable. It's reasonable that the panic hasn't set in for Lori yet, because your, your brain will come up with every rational explanation that it can before there's a psycho killer stalking me and killing my friends. Like, so many mundane explanations could be available that, you know, why wouldn't you go with one of those? And he just stopped off someplace, you know? Oh my god, are the doctors still in the damn bushes? He recognizes the car straight away. Yep. Alright, well confirmed, he's in the area. And he's got, is he just going to try and shoot him? Like, he's got a gun, but... Are those the keys to Annie's car? But you said Annie left to go find Paul, so... If she discovers the car there, then she's going to know something's wrong. Annie? Linda? Did he move the bodies? Shouldn't Bob be hanging right there? Huh? Like, what does she think the prank is? That they're just, like, in the dark for hours and hours and hours waiting for her to come over here and get scared? You know Annie doesn't have that kind of attention span. <laughs> That's actually a really cool shot. I like the way the light is cutting across the carpet like that. Oh, God! With the... Oh, the tombstone! He is. He's reliving his own... 
Like traumatic moment, he's killing his sister over and over. Ha ah! ha! God damn! Okay, so where's Linda? There she is! Fuck! Get out, get out, get out! Don't stop! Don't stop! You can process all of this once you're on the sidewalk, girl. Just get the fuck out of the house. God damn it. Oh! Oh, fuck! She's lucky she landed on her ass. If she'd landed head first, that'd be it. It'd be done. Oh, God. Here we go. Here we go. And we've never once seen him move quickly. He's always moving at pretty leisurely pace, and yet... I don't know, he has a teleporter or something. Because he's able to just be gone like that. Come on! I've also noticed that in a lot of the soundtrack, there's like a ticking or a chiming. It's either like a hi-hat, or like a triangle in this case, or... You know, it's it really ratchets up your anxiety a lot. What do, what do you do? What do you do? Oh, that, that works. That works. I thought she was going to try and fight with the broken glass. Yeah, and she can't run full speed because of the stairs. It hurt her leg. Cross the street. Get to the house. Protect the children. Lock the door. Call the cops. Don't go next door. The fuck? Fucking Kitty Genovese all over again. You left them in there. Oh, but here he comes! He has upgraded the knife. That knife is so big you can see it from far away. Hurry up, Tommy! It's the boogeyman! Oh, he's way too close for comfort now. Oh my god, move it, kid. Move it! Cut the phone line. It's so premeditated. It, that's what's terrifying about him is that he's not just some crazy person acting on a whim. Like he's thought this out. He's planned it. For all we know, he spent all fifteen of those years in the in the hospital planning this out. But like at the same time, it really feels like he's acting on compulsion. He couldn't have known these people were here, you know. Oh come on! Oh nice, knitting needle in the neck. Why are you still there? Why aren't you moving? Why aren't you moving? Why are you reaching behind the couch? He's gonna get back up. I can't believe she thinks it's over. Why are you just... <laughs> I can't tell if this doctor's gonna come in clutch and save Lori's life or if he's just gonna end up another victim. He might get there too late, you know? I'm scared. There's nothing to be scared of. Are you sure? How? I killed him. Oh, fuck! I killed the boogeyman. Go, 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 go! Get in there, come on, Tommy! What are you gonna do? Find a weapon at this point, you know? You're upstairs, you're trapped. You can't just jump out the window. <laughs> oh, this is not gonna work. Oh, this is painful. Herein lies the true horror of this movie, right? Is watching people make decisions you wouldn't make and have to just suffer the consequences. Oh, man. Oh, man. And she's got nothing to defend herself with in there. Let's try attacking with coat hangers, I guess. Okay, yes. Yes! That's it, Lori. Come on, you got this. Nice! She's the only one that's fought back. She's the only one that's had a chance to fight back. Everyone else was taken by utter surprise. Now get up and move! Why are you just... Uh, you taking a breather? You just taking five? 
It's ironic this entire thing is like Mike Myers' mistake. He he attacked her from behind on the couch. He had her dead to rights and he missed. He full on just missed with the knife. Leading to, you know, all of this. It's like, how could he miss? Was his heart not in it? Did he not really want to kill her? There's no way it's over. There's no way he's dead. You need to collect your children and get the fuck out of the house. I want you to go down the street to the Mackenzie's house. I want you to tell them to call the police. Go do as I say. Okay, if they make it out the front door, they're good. They're safe. Because he's in the house with her still. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna sit up. Why didn't you go with them? Why didn't you go with them to call the cops? Oh, thank God the doctor found them. Okay, okay. Now we're cooking. Now we're now we're get, really getting somewhere. Come on, Doc. You already know what it is. You already know. Come on! I get what makes him crazy, but what makes him physically impervious to all this damage he's taking? <laughs> Come on, Lori. Yes, come on, Doc! Break the hold! Shoot him! Oh! Whoa, we saw his face. Did he get him? He shot him a bunch of times, and then he fell. I'm still not convinced. I'm still not convinced. God damn it. And he's out there still. I understand this is very emotional and upsetting and traumatic what just happened, but you guys need to be communicating with the cops. Where's the backup? Get him down here. This killer is at large still. Oh, I really hate this. He could be anywhere, and you just hear the breathing. That's... What? Oh, that's such an unsatisfying ending! Oh, he could be anywhere. God damn it. That was fantastically done. That was so suspenseful. And, and... Like, not a whole lot happened until the very end of, like, the third act, but... You were so ready to get... Just anything jump out at you at any moment. Okay, so Tony Moran played Michael. You know, I guess I guess I didn't realize that he was only age 23. It makes sense. 15 years later, he was 6 years old. But just when I think about Michael Myers, I think about this just timeless big villain guy. But everyone has an origin, right? Yeah. And you you can hear it now, even as the credits are going, with the Halloween theme playing. That little ticka 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 ticka. There's like a ticking in the uh, in the music totally increases your anxiety. And, and I noticed that that ticking was used throughout the score. Um, at one point, it was a cowbell. It was a, a hi-hat right here. I think they even used a triangle at one point. Really, really cool use of music to help kind of exacerbate the tension and the feelings that you're already having just because of the scenarios that you're witnessing, you know? This was a lot of fun. I think I think the biggest takeaway of the movie here and maybe the message that, that kind of sits at the heart of this is that the boogeyman... Behind every story of the boogeyman and something, some awful urban legend or some story that became larger than life, behind every single one of those stories is a human being who committed an awful act. And that and that the real monsters that live among us are people just like us. And I, I, I feel like that's kind of the message here, is that it's not about ghouls and monsters and spooks and goblins. It's about human fucking beings. And, and the things that they are capable of when they have, like like a mental imbalance or an issue or just a precipitation of all these underlying factors, like that turns them into these monstrous human beings that are capable of anything. And that the real boogeyman is like, you know, your neighbor, you know, the guy at the grocery store. It's not some big green skinned monster. Um, yeah, this was a fantastic movie and I'm really glad that I've finally taken my first step into the Halloween franchise. I'm going to be watching all of the sequels of which I know that there's like, there's an acre of these movies, right? There's a whole bunch of sequels to this, and then there was a remake and a reboot, and there's a ton of sequels to that. So I have my work cut out for me, Halloween-wise. Uh, but thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed my first-time reaction to John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978.
this one was a real fun, a real fun time. Um, this reaction was edited by Nerd Chronic to comply with fair use down to 20 minutes of licensed footage. If you want to check out the uncut full-length version of this reaction, it's available on Patreon. Not only is Patreon a cool way to get the full-length versions of these reactions, you can also vote in content polls and weigh in on which movies you think I should react to next. There's a lot of fun stuff to check out over there. There's a link in the description of the video, so check that out. Thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace! Peace!